Hey everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lab and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials on YouTube and Facebook. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss out on any of our tutorials. Tonight I am going to show you how to print mylar or foil balloons using the iColor 550 white toner printer. Now these type of balloons can be printed with any white toner printer, which is honestly pretty cool. You're actually gonna be able to use the same two-step paper that you use on t-shirts. I'm going to be using iColor Select Ultra Bright tonight because that is my preferred media choice. I like that one because it has a softer feel and a better stretch and it's also a little bit more lightweight. In terms of something like foil balloons, we have to consider the weight of the transfer and how that can impact its floatability if you intend on filling them with helium. Now, mylar balloons can also be filled with air, and I will be doing a little of both of those with my balloons, but I really wanted to test this out with helium in particular. I purchased 18-inch balloons from Amazon. They're just simple white round balloons. The link is in the video description, and it was $11 for 20 balloons. The cost of uh, one sheet of A4 uh, eye color two step select ultra bright is just under two dollars, which makes the cost of creating one of these balloons maybe two dollars and seventy five cents. I checked on Etsy and a few other sites to see what price point these types of balloons sell at, and they sell anywhere between fifteen dollars and twenty five dollars. If you are doing sort of a more generic design, you can end up selling them for fifteen dollars. But if you're doing one that is personalized with names or dates or even a photo space, you can easily sell them for twenty five dollars. And to me, that is easy profiting money. Balloons are something that people love for all types of occasions. And honestly, their popularity has taken off in recent years. Balloon swags and balloon arches and all of that stuff has become a staple at all types of events from little intimate at-home parties, um, holiday get-togethers, and then of course, even at venues and bigger events. This is a great product for you to give a try. And keep in mind that if you don't have a white toner printer, you can always purchase transfers. Even purchasing a transfer, you're probably looking at about $5, $5.50 for the cost of your balloon, which still leaves a lot of room for profit. This is the kind of item that you want to sell quite a few of, but you know maybe not like hundreds of. So it's a really great item for smaller businesses. I do hope to get to make some cool designs for balloons that you can add photos in for those of you who want to give these a try. And of course, those that will be white toner friendly. So let's go ahead and head over to our workbench. We will, of course, determine the size of our transfer or our print. And then we will set everything up in our ProRip software. I'll walk you through the marrying process and then we'll go ahead and get our balloon pressed. All right, so as always, the first thing that we've gotta do is determine what size our print is gonna be. I'm using the iColor 550 white toner printer today, which has a max width of eight and a half inches, but it can do a length of up to like 48 inches if you buy the appropriate media for that. Now, I'm gonna be using iColor Select Ultra Bright two-step paper today because it has a lightweight it's a lightweight transfer um, and it has a, a good stretch. So I think it'll be a really good choice for balloons. Plus it's also what I always have on hand now. That comes in A4 size. Now I was a little concerned that that was gonna be too small because this is a 17 inch balloon. So eight inches is only like this big, like the my hand width, a little bit bigger than that. However, since these balloons were only $11 for 20 of them, I decided to try two things out. The first was to blow one up. It's a little deflated now because I blew it up last night. But I put some air in this one so I could get a good idea for what my maximum space was going to be before it you know, was all crinkled and whatnot. So with that in mind, there, tape measure out. That space actually comes to right about eight inches. And as you can see, the, this being the print zone actually is gonna look pretty good. It's gonna look aesthetically appealing. So we always have to remember that we're gonna lose some space on the depth. This is true of t-shirts as well. Um, anything that is going to have that depth that it doesn't have when it's flat. The second thing I did was see at which point I could 
press this. And the reason being is because we don't wanna accidentally seal our balloon so that we can't fill it with air. So I sacrificed two balloons. <laughs> the first one was to inflate, the second one was to make sure that um, we had some wiggle room here because this valve here goes all the way up to here, which that's not really gonna be centered for our design. But the good news is, is that I actually had a good amount of space and I can easily center the design in the middle at eight inches and still be able to inflate it. So I sacrificed two balloons for that. These are the 18 inch Mylar white balloons. They did come in different colors. They came from Amazon. And as I said, for $11, you got 20 of them. So we have determined that eight inches is going to be the size of our transfer. And that's the size that we're going to want to print. Now, I started stressing sizing a lot more and just measuring in general in tutorials for two reasons. One, because there's a lot of errors that happen because people don't check the size of their substrates beforehand. And two, because when you are trying to get a higher price point for your product, you need to make sure that it looks like something that has been professionally printed. You don't wanna give your customer something that's very amateur looking and then expect them to pay significantly more money. That's, that's not gonna result in the kind of sales that you want um, and you're likely to get resistance to your price point. For $11 for 20 of these balloons, um, you're looking at what, 50 cents? 50 cents or less, a little more than 50 cents per balloon about two dollars for an a4 sheet of the eye color select ultra bright you can use any two-step paper for this process uh, the ultra bright is what i had on hand now the most important part is going to be that you your transfer doesn't weigh down your balloon so the eye color select and select ultra bright are great choices since they are a little bit more lightweight if you're purchasing a transfer from a transfer seller you're more likely to spend around 450 for an A4 print, and that's simply because of all the process that goes into marrying a transfer and the time involved and whatnot. Uh, but even at those price points, whether you're able to have your costs around, you know, 275 or you're looking at more like 525, these balloons can still retail for 15 to 25 dollars. For balloons like we're making today for this baby shower, I would easily sell these for 20 and offer quantity discounts. I'm actually gonna be printing, I think 12 balloons, um, only one in this tutorial. But <laughs> I plan on printing quite a few and I would offer maybe $18 each if I was doing 12 of them as a little bit of a discount. You can also charge up to $25, as I said, if you have something that might incorporate a photo or maybe uh, personalization with dates and names. Remember that personalization, you can always charge more. And when you have a set collection of designs that you're like, okay, this is what I have, you can input a picture here or you can add name and dates here, you're able to charge more without increasing the amount of work that you're doing. So no matter which way you slice it, these are super profitable. Um, so I'm excited to show you how to set them up. We are gonna pop over to our ProRip software and we'll go ahead and get our design set up and print on our iColor 550 white toner printer. First thing we wanna do is of course, open up our RIP software. I'm using iColor ProRip with my iColor 550 white toner printer. Next, we wanna select the queue, which we will be printing through. We're gonna be using the overprint queue for this project. You can switch between your cues easily by simply clicking on the tabs. With each cue, you'll also see a picture of how your cartridges should be aligned or placed inside of your white toner printer. This is the setup for the overprint cue, and if you've been doing other projects with one of the other cues, it's always a good idea to double check that your toner cartridges are laid out as it shows in this picture. Next, we wanna select our paper choice from the drop-down menu. We're gonna be using iColor Two-Step Select Ultra Bright today. This is my preferred to keep on hand for T-shirts in particular. 
And I really like this paper because it's lightweight and it has good stretch. It's just under $2 a sheet, which makes it pretty reasonably priced. And it doesn't really add a lot of cost to either your garment or in this case, your balloon. You'll notice that there's the option with holes or stripes. That's gonna be automatic lined or hole rasterization. I don't want that for my balloons, so I'm just gonna choose the Uninet two-step select option, which is your choice for both select and select ultra bright. Next, I wanna import my graphic. You can do this by clicking on the little plus sign with the paper in the top left corner. This will open your file explorer and I'm going to print this over the moon balloon. So we'll go ahead and click open. It'll take just a minute to load. When you see this red, that means that your uh, design is currently outside of the print page size. I find it easiest just to select my graphic and choose fit to page, and it will resize it accordingly. And then I always like to have things centered. That's just my personal preference if I'm not printing multiple things. Now you always wanna double check how close you are to the edges and adjust your graphic if necessary uh, over or maybe make it a little bit smaller. In this case, I just need to nudge it over a little bit. So I'm gonna come right down here to where it shows horizontal position. And if I increase that, it's gonna move it over. It does it in a little bit larger increment that I would like. So I'm just gonna manually enter the 1.25. Let's try doing 0 0.05. We want it moved over just a little bit so it doesn't end up getting cut off. I usually aim for about a quarter of an inch on either side as a good print margin. If your design is still just a little bit too big, you can adjust the size right here in your measurements. So I think I'm going to go ahead and decrease this to just like 8.1. Just shrink it down just a little bit. And I'll go ahead and center it on the page again. And I think that that will be good placement for printing. Now I actually plan on printing two of these balloons. So I am going to set that over on my page tab. I'm going to come right here to where you can choose your total times to output page. And I'm going to enter two. And back over on the job tab, I wanna make sure to click on color adjust. And this is gonna open this uh, easy color adjustments panel. I want to deselect enable ink re removal so that it will not apply any automatic rasterization to transparency zones um, in my design. I, don't, I want this to be nice and solid for this purpose. It's under this panel that you could always also do things like adjust your white undercoat and your choke if necessary. I only end up adjusting those on specific types of projects. I find that the settings that are built into ProRip for the different paper types are pretty on point unless I you know, need to do like an all white design on a black shirt or something like that. Then I might come in here and increase that coverage. For the most part, I don't fuss too much with this at all um, for most of the projects that I do, which are actually not garments. So once you have that deselected, you can click OK. When we click on the page tab, we can see which tray is recommended for our paper to be loaded into to print with the media that is selected in the queue that we are using. So we'll go ahead and pop over to our printer and we will enter our paper into the bypass tray and then click on our little rainbow printer for the print job. So our bypass tray, as it showed in our RIP software, is going to be the one that opens in the front. Our tray one is the one that pulls out on the bottom. We can see that it tells us that the print side needs to be face down. Now with the iColor Select Ultra Bright A sheet, it's going to look like this. It's sort of like a frosted transparency looking sheet. And the print side is the matte side with the frosted coating. The high gloss side is the back. It might be a little hard to tell in the video, I'm trying to catch some light there, but you can always scratch it with your fingernail and you'll see some of that coating sort of scratch off if you are unsure. There is a definitely a difference you can feel when you are using this. So I just wanna slide this into my paper guide, maybe. There we go. And we'll go ahead and click on that little rainbow printer to send this to print.
Once it starts to print, it will spool the job and then it'll pull the paper in and spit it out the top. Now, one of my favorite features about the iColor 550 uh, or the, all of the iColor printers, I guess, but this one it has the ability to print up to 40 pages per minute of a continuous print. So that definitely helps speed up your workflow when you have a lot of prints to do at once. And we'll see, it just comes up the top. And you always just want to double check your print, make sure everything looks good, make sure you don't have any weird anything on the back, such as toner buildup, and that you didn't cut off any of your edges. So it looks like we are good to go ahead and marry this. So let's head over to our heat press where we can apply our adhesive and marry our transfer for our balloon. All right, so here we have Blue the Fusion IQ. This is our very first time in using Blue in a tutorial. I have had him just a few weeks. Um, I've gotten to do a little bit of trial run and I am pretty much in love. This is a fantastic heat press, uh, absolutely worth all of the hype. So when your time comes to upgrade or pull the trigger on a high quality heat press, I would absolutely recommend going ahead and getting this model. I purchased my Fusion IQ through iColor and you can purchase through them as well or any stalls dealer. Now, the very first step to marrying any two-step paper is to preheat that bottom platen. So we're gonna do that just by closing our press. So we'll close our press and we will let it run down at least 60 seconds. I usually do the full 120 though, just for best results. Now, marrying is just the process of combining our printed toner sheet with the adhesive sheet. The adhesive sheet for this has writing on the back to make it nice and easy for you. When we line them up, we're just gonna go ahead and line them up like so. And then it's best practice to just make one of the corners folded up as long as it doesn't impede your design. This will just make it easy to pull back when the press is done. We do need to increase our pressure, I see. So one of the things that I'm really liking about the Fusion IQ is this amazing um, digital display. The digital display is pretty easy to use and it has a whole menu where you can enter your own presets and you can also download the presets from places like Forever or iColor for their different medias. It actually came pre-programmed with some presets already, um, mostly for vinyl. <laughs> I think like vinyl and some other vinyl adjacent type of things. So I've added a few that I already use in here and I will be doing a video on how to import the settings from eye color in particular uh, as that is on my to-do list. So we're gonna give this, you know, just the other 30 seconds and then I do need to adjust the pressure because you want to marry your two-step paper with high pressure. So eight or nine on your pressure or max pressure if you're doing it by hand. The marrying process is something that a lot of people um, find is their point of failure. And it's really just about following the steps and modifying them for your heat press if you're using a lower grade heat press. So I'm just gonna tighten this down and then we can close it and see where our pressure is at. We're not quite there yet. It's gonna go a little half turn. There we go. All right, I'm gonna pull the drawer on out, put my transfer in the middle, and I just wanna cover it so that that adhesive corner there doesn't end up on my top platen cover. All right, so maximum pressure, 310 degrees Fahrenheit for 120 seconds. This is what the instructions recommend. This is what also always works for me. Again, we're doing the eye color select ultra bright two step paper. As I was saying, the marrying process is often what people end up struggling with. And a lot of it is either their temperature of their heat press is not accurate or 
their pressure is not accurate. These are like the two things that cause the biggest problems outside of heat and humidity factors. But these are the things that cause the biggest problems in the marrying process. So having a good quality heat press with a digital pressure read is definitely a benefit. Um, or at least having a heat press that you can calibrate your temperature properly on is beneficial. However, I have been using the iColor 550 with multiple different heat presses used to marry, and I am still a firm believer that you can work with what you have. It's just that working with better quality equipment, just like working with better quality materials, tends to give you more seamless and fluid results. Thus far, I've been very happy with the process with the Fusion IQ, and again, 100% worth the hype. It's a great heat press. So we have just about 30 seconds left. When this is done, we're gonna open it up and pull out our platen, and we need to give it a few seconds to dwell. Now, that dwell time is really important with eye color select and select ultra bright. You want to just give it a few seconds to really make sure that adhesive is bonded before you peel it back. So I'm gonna show you what I do. It worked for me on my old heat press and this new heat press. So hopefully it'll work for you as well. All right. Move you guys out of the way a bit. All right, so I pick it up. I go one, two, three, and then grab that corner and nice slow peel back. You definitely wanna pull it back. It works best at an angle. All right, and then you wanna check your adhesive sheet to make sure that your adhesive sheet doesn't show any little toner that was left behind that lets you know you got a nice good transfer. See how you can see where the adhesive is and isn't. And of course, it's always a good idea to check the back of your transfer as well. Make sure you do have a nice solid coating, which we do. So we are ready to go. Now we do need to let our heat press cool down because the temperature for this to do the balloons is only 200 degrees. So we can easily select a new setting by clicking on that little menu icon there. And then going down and I have already input one for Mylar balloons. And it'll also tell us how long it's gonna take to cool and heat up. So. Nice little features. I am really loving it. You can, of course, just select your temp and you can adjust it as well. So we're going to fade out and let this cool down because that will take quite a few minutes and then we'll fade back in. Okay, our press is all cooled down and we are ready to get our balloon up here. So we're going to go ahead and give you guys a better view. <laughs> All right, we wanna go ahead and get this up on our press. And again, we wanna be cautious of our um, vent area. So I'm actually gonna move it down just a little bit so I don't end up covering too much. And then the next thing we always wanna do is cut off the edges of our transfer. We don't wanna accidentally transfer some adhesive. You can see some there and down at the bottom. So I'll just go ahead and cut that out. and find our middle. Now, since this was balloon was folded in its quarter, it's a little bit easier. We'll just get it right about in the middle. Not right about, I like accuracy, but I am eyeballing it. You can always choose to go ahead and measure and things like that. I, of course, wanna make sure my text is in line with the bottom. So it's always a good idea just to adjust your balloon accordingly. And good. Once you're satisfied, you can go ahead and Cover that, slide it on forward, and we need to loosen our pressure a little bit. There we go. We are doing 200 degrees for 30 seconds with medium light pressure. So a three or a four if you're using a digital heat press, um, but some, something medium, medium. You shouldn't get a lot of resistance, but it shouldn't be super light either. Once this is ready, we'll pull it right off our press and give it a moment to cool down. Actually, it does not take long at all. Very different from doing shirts 
with the ultra bright, which tends to take several minutes to cool down. All right, go ahead and open that up. So we're gonna pull our balloon off over the side here. All right, so we just need to give this just a minute or so to cool down. This actually cools down pretty quickly. Um, once you feel it pretty cold to the touch, you can check it. You wanna just sort of peel the plastic carrier and as long as your transfer is staying, you're in good shape, which mine is. So we can just slow roll this back. And there's our balloon. Now, of course, the last step is to make sure we did not accidentally seal it. Again, I did test one to make sure that that wouldn't happen, but you know, it's always a good idea to check. So my balloon came with this little straw. I get it in that hole. All right, stick it right on up in there too to break that open. And then get this on our helium tank. I just picked up a helium tank at my local Walmart. There is our balloon. And we always wanna check and make sure it can float. Mine is floating very nicely. Let me see if I can get it back a little bit for you. Oops. <laughs> it's flying all over the place because the air conditioner. There you have it. There is your balloon. So these balloons can be sold retail price between $15 and $25. Um, remember that this is a great item to offer personalization, but don't go overboard, you know, offer the ability to add a name, maybe a special date, add a picture, and that can really be your whole collection of products to allow you to offer something that's personalized, but isn't going to be a ton of extra work on your part. So these are pretty quick and easy to put together, very profitable and great for all year round. You can offer these for events, for store openings, for occasions like baby showers and bridal showers. You can also, of course, offer them for the upcoming holiday season. This is a great idea for elf drops or, or elf returns um, and Santa cams and of course, just general holiday events, birthdays, graduations, weddings, engagement parties, all of those things. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Remember, if you would like to uh, print one of these but don't have a white toner printer, you can always purchase transfers from someone who offers white toner transfers. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>